we're going to look at um, the second set of uh, the discussion that we we started. We started looking at um, we started looking at uh, um, we started looking at uh, approximation. Started looking at approximation, and this is what this is the second part which I've called. Uh, Lesson two that I've called as lesson two. Are you able to see what I'm what, what I'm what 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 is here? Yes. Okay. So we are looking at approximation now. This part of approximation, we are just interested in. Uh, this thing goes again. We are just interested in. Uh, we're just interested in. Uh, um, What is this? As I do this, the thing was, I don't know what's happening today. As I come to this. <laughs> ah, I don't know. Once second, do this. this. Hey. Okay. Okay. So we are looking at uh, we are looking at uh, um, approximation, and uh, in particular, today we'll be looking at what we call scientific notation, which is coming the the second part. The first part we'll look at rounding off. Rounding off is a, um, a, a scientific way or a mathematical way or is a way in which numbers are written to the nearest figure. There are times they'll give you a very big number, they'll give you a very big number and then they ask you to round off that number either to the nearest whole number, or maybe to the nearest 10, to the nearest 100. It depends on how the instructions are coming. But all in all, the method that we use or the approach that we use is the same as that one that we were using when we were, um, when we were writing numbers. Uh, let me say, maybe they say the way we're converting numbers to uh, two significant figures to three significant figures, the approach that we were taking where we were getting a one from the number on the right and add it to the number on the left. If that number on the right is five and above, that is the approach that we are going to follow even here approach that we're going to follow even here is the same. So like here, they have given us two numbers. There is a 12.3, there's also 12.5. And then they ask us to round off these numbers to the nearest whole numbers, to the nearest whole number. How do we go about it? Remember, these numbers that we have been given, 12.3 and 12.5, they are falling in between these all numbers, which is 12, and this all number, which is here, which is 13. So these two numbers that we have are falling in between these two whole numbers. So when they say we round it, we round them off to the nearest whole numbers, we are going to ask ourselves, where are these numbers nearer to? Mm -hmm. So let's look at uh, this 12.3. Uh, this 12.3, the way I decided to bring it, I, it was in such a way that I had drawn it my numbers from what, 12, then one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine, and then this is 13. 
So when we say that um, this 12.3, this 12.3, if we check, it is nearer to 12 than it is to 13. So because 13.5 is nearer to 12 than it is to 13, therefore we are going to say 12, we are going to say that 12 can be rounded off, 12.3 can be rounded off to the nearest whole number, which is just 12. Why are we saying so? Because this point three, we are considering this is three here. And we find that three is less than five. So because three is less than five, we are not going to add anything to a 12 to, to get us to 13. We are just going to maintain it 12 as it is. So 12.3 being rounded off, being estimated to the nearest whole number, the nearest number that we can get to is 12. Therefore, 12.3 12 can be rounded off to the nearest 12. Are we, are, are, are we getting something from that? Yes. Now, when we look at this other number, when we look at this other number, this other number is uh, 12.5. And when we look at 12.5, we are rounding it off to the nearest whole number. The nearest whole number that we can have is 12. The nearest number that we can have, another one is 13. But how do we go about it? So we are going to consider this point five. When you see that five, five, remember we're saying if the number on the right is five all the way up to nine, we get a one and we add it to the number on the left. If it is four and below, we don't do anything to that number. Just like we did not do anything to this three, which was there. So here, to the nearest whole number, we are seeing that uh, this 3.5, this 3.5 here, we have a five here, which is a decimal number. So because of a five, which is here, we're gonna get a one and put here, and we're gonna have 13. So 12.5, even, even if it's 12.6, 12.7, 12.8, 12.9, those numbers can be rounded off to the nearest 13. And if the number is 12.4, 12.3, 12.49, 12 12.1, 12.07, those numbers can be rounded off to the nearest whole number, which is a 12. So that is the way we go about rounding off the decimal number to the nearest whole number. And when we go to, this is explanation which was given. So I say rounding off those two numbers to the nearest whole number. And these are the solutions that were written right up here. They were saying that 12.3 is nearer to 12 than it is to 13. How is it nearer to 12? We are considering the decimal number. It is less than five. So you don't do anything to it, you just maintain a zero just like that. And then we are saying that 12.15 is halfway, not even nearer to, is halfway, is halfway between 12 and 13. So because it is halfway, and because of the presence of this five here, we're going to get a one and add it to a three so that it becomes 13. So 12.5, being rounded off to a nearest to a number gives us 13. Okay, that is uh, the thing. Now they've given us other modes in which questions might come. Four of them, round off the following numbers to the nearest indicated digits. So this number here, 84, we got round it off. This 84, we're going to round it off to the nearest 10. Uh -huh. 
the nearest 10. The second one, we're going to round it off to the nearest 100. And then this one, we're going to round it off to the nearest whole number, like we did the previous uh, 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 slide, the one that is up. And then we're going to round off this number to the nearest 10. How do we go about this? <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to solve them from here without even going to the, to the part which contains the solution. Just allow me to do this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll be writing them there. So the first one, the first one we are rounding off to the nearest T10. So when we have 84, when we have 84, being rounded off to the nearest 10. You remember what we were doing when we were in grade three? This, these are ones, these are tens. If we had another one this side, we could have been hundreds. So when they are saying to the nearest 10, what they mean is that identify the position of the tenth in the number and the position of the tenth is this one. So we know that a 10 has got one zero. A 10 has got one zero. So meaning this number, which is here, we need to turn it into a zero. And when we turn it into a zero, before we do that, let's consider that number. That number is five and above. We get a one and put here so that it becomes nine. And then that number becomes a zero. Then that number becomes a zero. If that's not, if that number in the circle is four and above. And if it is not, don't think that we can do to, uh, to that number is just making it be a zero so that the significant figure should only be, should only start from the 10, not the ones, but from the 10. So this 84 being rounded off to the nearest uh, 10, we're gonna get, Eight zero. Eight zero. Because this four here is less than five. So we cannot get a one and add to the number that is on the left. Are we okay? Yes. And uh, if we are to work on this number, nine, six, seven to the nearest hundred. To the nearest hundred, what do we do? All you need to do is consider the fact that in this number that we have here, these seven is a ones, the, te the six is a tenth, the, na the, na the hundred is a, the nine is a hundred. So now when they say to the nearest 100, they are saying 100 has two zeros. So meaning this number has to be turned into a zero and that number has to be turned into a zero. So we have to consider that. So meaning our turning into zeros will end just here. So all you need to do is to consider the number that is on the right. And that number is above five. So we're gonna get a one and put here. But when we get a one and put on the nine, just that becomes a 10. Just getting a one from a six and putting it on nine, it becomes a 10, but we already have these two numbers that we tend into zeros. So nine, six, seven, being rounded off to the hundreds, you find that it gives us 1,000. It gives us, 1,000, so that is what we're supposed to do. And that other number, which is uh, seven to five, that other number, which is seven to five, or two, two point seven, that number two, two point seven, uh, if you had to round it off to two point seven, to 2.7 to the nearest 
whole number. So we're going to consider this decimal number that we have here, which is a seven. We turn it to a T zero, and then we get a one and put there. We find that it's going to give us 23. So 22.7 being converted to, um, to uh, a whole number, we go and get a 23. Mr. Molinga. Yes, Chuma. What if the question, exactly your question was 22.3, how would the answer be? And then we have to turn it to the nearest phone number, 22.3. 22.3? So yes. what we need to do is consider this decimal number. Is it above? Is it equal to five or above? Below. So because it is below, we're gonna just make it a zero. Therefore, it remains just a twenty-two. That is what we need to do. Yeah. So with all that said, then we can slide to the next page. Lisa, are you getting what we're doing? Now, Mr. Mlinga, why should it be 22? Just why not 220? Sorry? <clears throat> I'm saying why shouldn't it be 220? Why is it just 22. We are dealing with whole numbers. We are dealing with whole numbers. And what we have in here, we've got two types of numbers. We have a whole number, which is a 22, and we have a three, which is a decimal number. Okay? So in converting, yes. we, need, we need to consider the first decimal number that we have after the decimal point in here, the decimal number that we have is a three. So all you need to do is to consider that now we are just interested in having day in having two numbers. We get rid of these decimal numbers. Okay. Yeah. So looking at that three here, it's less than five. So you just get just get that number and turn into a zero. If you want, you can just say twenty-two point zero. If you want, the truth of the matter remains that that number is just 22. Okay. Yep. I hope that's clear now. It is. Good. Then we can go to, we can go to our next page, the next page here. What is the next page? Okay, the next page. Oh, where is the next page now? The next page is, I think here. Okay. Yeah, that is, I hope you can see the next page. This is our next page. This is our next page. And um, it's just showing the answers that we from solving, except that here I did not write, but we know that uh, it has to be, it has to be 100. We know that it has to be 100. So this one, oh, it's a thousand. It has to be a thousand. That is what that part is talking about. And uh, um, this part here, the, so on that part, that's what you need to do. If you have a bigger number, converting it to a thousand, just count three numbers from the right. Maybe let me just have it here. If you have, uh, let's say seven, uh, but now this one looks too small. If you have, uh, maybe say seven, zero, maybe let me say seven, five, eight, nine, seven. 
they ask you to write that number to the nearest thousand, to the nearest 1,000. You know that 1,000 has got zeros, so we've got that number being turned into a zero, that number being turned into a zero, and that number being turned into a zero, because this is the last number here. So you need to consider it, because it is above five, you just get a one and put on that number, it becomes a seven, six, and then this becomes zero, that zero, and that zero. It's gonna be seven, six, zero, 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 to the nearest 1,000. That's what it means. Okay. Now, this part here, I hope uh, the, the amount of time remaining will allow us. We are now doing um, um, what we call scientific notation, which I talked about. Now, this scientific notation is very, very important because uh, it helps us to write a lot of numbers. In fact, it's a short way of writing long numbers. It's a scientific way. At the time, this scientific notation is, to, is said to, to be called a standard form. But there's a little bit of knowledge from the indices that we need to apply. What do I mean? There are times you have a number which is 4,000. You know that this 4,000 can be written as four times 1,000. It's the same way, isn't it? 4,000 can also be written as four times 1,000. And this, and this 1,000 can also be written as four times, this 1,000 can be written as 10 times, 10 times 10, it's the same thing. And if you want, you can say four times, how many times have we multiplied the 10? Three. So you can say 10 power three. So this is what we mean by saying scientific notation. That is what it means. So we are, we are trying to get into a situation whereby you have a very, very long number. Now you write it in a scientific way by showing it in a simpler way. And this is how you need to go about it. So let's look at uh, this thing that we have here. This thing that we have here, we are told to write these two numbers in the scientific notation. So let's see how we can go about it. Let us see how we can go about it. So the way we are going to do this, we are going to do it in such a way that Okay, in such a way that we have uh, a we have a we have a a three a three thousand. So we know that this three thousand can be written as three times ten times ten, and again times. 10, isn't it? Therefore, yes. you, can write, you can write it as three times. We just get one 10 and we ask ourselves, how many times did we multiply that 10? Three times, therefore you write it like that. So this is how you go about writing numbers in the scientific notation, which is at times called the standard D form. Are we okay with the way this part has been done? Yes. Good. Mr. Mo yes. Um, just a question. Is it possible like this part here? Uh-huh. This part here, yes. Is it possible to put it in this way, 30 times 100? Is it okay? And then you put the answer in the same form. 30 times 100? Yeah, it's okay. 
but mostly we want to make sure that we only have one whole number when you are doing that. If you want to go that way, it will be 30 times 10 raised to power 2. <laughs> it's one way, but now here you've got two whole numbers. We want to have only one. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then we go to the, the other one. Oops, the other one, which is, uh, let me just, oh no, not done. The other one is, uh, the other one is, uh, okay, the other one is this one here, which is uh, um, zero point zero zero eight. Now, do you know that this is 0 0.08 is the same as eight over 1000? Do you know that? No. No. Do you know that uh, 0 0.08 is the same as the eight over 1000? No. There is that way in grade, in grade seven, they taught us how to convert decimal numbers into fractions, when you have a number like that, they told us that the, make it over one, this decimal point, this decimal point, let it be one and count how many numbers are there. There are three, so you write one, two, three. And uh, oh, okay. yes, yeah, so what, that is the same as eight over 1000. Do you know that? Oh, have we remembered now? Yeah. So meaning, uh, meaning, meaning this number can also be written as eight over 10 raised to power what? Three, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. Then which can also be written as eight now, when this power here is positive, this power here is positive because we are dividing. The moment this number goes on top, this power becomes negative. So we can also write as eight times 10 raised to power three. Now, because we have this, this, time, we were, this time we were dividing, now the moment we put a multiplication here, the sign becomes negative. So this number here, will be written in that way. I don't know if you're understanding. Are you understanding? For me, yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's the way you go about it. Now, let me see if you have a, a number like, um, you have a number like, uh, 0 0.00001. How do you write it? One over, so you count one, two, three, four, five, over one. One, two, three, four, five, which we can write as one over 10. Then we count the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Then we put a five like that. 